He talked about he's been scuffling with injuries since he's been here. It's just time for him to put it together, get that first SEC win for him this season. Josh Pearson hitting in the leadoff spot today after going third in the order the first two games of the series, and he takes strike one. The junior hitting 234 with six homers and 21 RBIs. Jay Johnson hoping to get somebody on base ahead of both White and Jones, who have absolutely been tremendous, not just this weekend, but throughout the year, a combined 42 home runs and 100 RBIs between those two. The 0-2 from Hess. Nasty breaking ball that just missed, according to Mayhew Edwards. Our plate umpire today, Alfredo Burkeen is at first. Seth Buckminster is the second base umpire, and rounding out the crew down at third is David Savage. A ball and two strikes to Pearson, as that one catches the corner for a called third strike. He barely missed on the previous pitch, but a great delivery right there as Jay Johnson is in his third season. They won the national title a year ago, a great run at Arizona before he came in as the head coach three years ago. And again, able to give the Tigers their first SEC crown, or excuse me, national crown in a while by their standards. Boy, they were so dominant in the 90s and titles also sprinkled afterwards, but that Skip Burtman run in the 90s was absolutely legendary and will be talked about as long as we play SEC baseball. Tommy White, tremendous all weekend long. You see what he's done in the series. One of those three doubles just missed becoming the second home run. Hess again, second straight batter in the count. And another called third strike. Confident early is Hess, which is not a shock. It's not been innings like this that have been an issue. It's all of a sudden, where did it go? He can kind of lose his stuff, and that's been an issue. That's right. And you just saw a 96-mile-an-hour heater from Ben Hess and rolling off just top-tier curveballs. And you see the stuff is there for Ben Hess, and it's working inning by inning, pitch by pitch, and just trusting in his confidence. And that's one thing that Alabama's done in moving him from the Friday starting role to now Sunday, which hopefully will free him up because you're not facing Friday, Friday guy. There's a lot of pressure that sometimes you can put on yourself. Here's Jared Jones, who's put pressure on Bama pitching all weekend. Taps that one foul, and the count evens. At a ball and a strike, Jones, the sophomore, hitting 311 with 22 homers and 45 RBIs on the year. He had a rocket shot in the top of the first on Friday that started the scoring for LSU, and it looked late like they were going to get the opener. But some Bama contact late and some mistakes changed that as that pitch Gets out of the yard, but he was out in front, and the count goes to one and two. He guessed right. He just guessed too soon. Back to Ben Hess. We talked about his pitches. Fastball's going to sit in that 94, 97 range. We've seen the curveball that he's been able to locate early. He's also got a slider he's going to mix in. But again, it's how long can you minimize the big inning? That's the big thing for Ben Hess. He is struck out two looking. Ahead one and two again. He almost snuck that one past Jones, but he got a piece to keep the at bat going. And anytime you get through this top end of the lineup for LSU, you feel really good. We got to talk to Tommy White. He batted lead off the first two games. There were so many times on Saturday where he was he was at bat with nobody on, so they wanted to change that dynamic up. Another one, two. And that one just missed up. No go, according to Alfredo Burkeen at first. Un two, two. 
with two out here in the first coming up. And a call, third strike. Jones thought it was low. Not a call. Your third baseman, 376 average, 18 home runs from the leadoff spot, and also tied for the team lead with McCants at 49 RBIs. And that's the guy they'll work against today. It was a late announcement of Samuel Dutton as the starter, the junior righty. 0-1, but with an ERA of 4.09. It's only his second start of the season. And that one misses a tad high, and the count evens up at one ball, one strike. You see Samuel Dutton right there. Fastball 90, 93. He's got off-speed pitch with a slider and a curveball that he's going to incorporate. Really had a great start his freshman year. He started 11 games. Looks like this one's going to stay in play, and Jones will make the grab. In foul territory for out number one. You know, this one's got special meaning for Dutton. He's a junior, but he is a native of Southside, Alabama, near Gadsden, played at Westbrook Christian High School. It's the same school that produced Brody Croyle. Alabama fans that remember and should remember well the former Bama quarterback. Could really spin it. He could indeed. Ian Petrutz hits the soft liner right at Stephen Milam for out number two. So both pitchers, albeit in different manners, getting quick two outs from the opposition. Good start for Dutton right there. Line drive out. I think that's the thing for Coach Johnson and how he wants to go about this. Start with Dutton, probably looking to go two or three innings. Yeah, the bullpen already fully occupied for LSU. Not gonna say at the first hint of trouble, but maybe the second. And the bullpen basically empty right now, hoping that Hess can go for a while. There's Justin LeBron, the Bama shortstop, the freshman. Standing in for the Crimson Tide. Batting with two outs and nobody aboard. That one catches the outer half. The last couple SEC weekends for LSU, they've been in and out trying to test Sunday starters. It's been Anderson and Ackenhausen. So for Dutton, this is an opportunity for him to showcase his stuff in a starting role. Pretty good job on the part of Dutton to get the side in order, but especially look at this. Here on our SEC Network coverage, Alabama, LSU, final home game of the year for the Crimson Tide and the final game of the weekend series with Ashton Larson, the freshman, productive this weekend. He's reached four times and taps that one foul. Look, they've had some good moments as a squad, even though it hasn't been as dominant an LSU season as they're accustomed to in Baton Rouge. This is still a team, if you follow the LSU Tigers at any year, they seem to always start playing their best baseball around this time. 0-2. Chased one up and came up empty. And boy, Hess has recorded four strikeouts. And you see right there, Ben Hess, 0-2, elevates a fastball. And that's this is the recipe and the start that you wanted. Obviously, he's starting to command his fastball inside and out, and you've seen him being able to incorporate the curveball already. So that's for Ben Hess, confidence more than anything else as he needs momentum in a bad way. 95 on the fastball and a pitch just out of the zone, but again, changing the eye level to the batter. Pretty effective. This guy's been a tough out, though, all year long. Steven Milam talked about it, the reigning SEC freshman of the week, and those are numbers that will get you into consideration for it again. Four of eight at the plate so far. And the first time that we have seen Hess fall behind to a batter so far. You see Milam's numbers a week ago that got him freshman of the week designation and numbers actually better than that already this weekend. Lifts that one foul and out of play left side. Long 
run for Petrutz, but ran out of real estate. Coach JJ, pitching coach for Alabama, talked to him, says so still got a ton of confidence in Ben Hess, and, and they were just saying, if we can get him going as much as he's struggled as of late, this put their team in a different type of speed of trajectory of where they can go, and Ben Hess has an all and can do that. 2-1. Slap foul and out of play to the left. And with a two-strike count, Alabama will go with that shift defensively. They'll bring Gage Miller over from third and put him basically, you see, to the right of second. And it allows Max Grant, their second baseman today, to play a shallow right field. Grant had a good at bat when he came in at a pinch hitting roll yesterday for the Tide. That one's chopped foul. Like you said, Max Grant getting a spot start at second base. He played a platoon job with Mason Swinney when Bryce Eblen was banged up with a hamstring injury early on in SEC play, so he's gotten a ton of experience. Also was called on last weekend when the food poisoning problem ran through the clubhouse and did a nice job there. A couple of home runs over the weekend against Mississippi State. And with Eblen struggling, gets an opportunity on Sunday. Two balls, two strikes with one out here in the Tiger half of the second. Scoreless game. And still for the moment, a hitless game as Milam fouls that one off. Chris was talking about the Mississippi State series Alabama played last weekend, food poisoning. Ben Hess started on Sunday. Gets the start on Sunday, only was able to go four. He was battling food poisoning, and Coach Rob Vaughn literally said it was a gutsy performance, and that was kind of a little bit of momentum that he took and a good start from there, so see if he can continue to roll that into today. Milam keeps the at-bat going. Got a piece of that when it's 96 miles per hour. Another payoff pitch to the LSU second baseman, and that one's well out of the zone. And it'll put a man at first. Rob Vaughn's Alabama Crimson Tide trying to win the series in the first year head coach in Tuscaloosa. You see his mark this year. He is 20, uh, excuse me, 213 and 135, or was coming into the weekend. Now 214 and 136 in seven years as a head coach. Six of those. At Maryland, the last two seasons, they won the Big Ten title. First offering to Michael Braswell the third misses upstairs. Mableton, Georgia native, talking off air pregame. Really talented young man, three for ten. A couple of extra base hits, an RBI for the weekend. Breaking ball clips the corner to even it at one and one. And you brought up a great point in that conversation, DK, about how the standard has been set so high at shortstop that what Braswell has done this year gets overlooked somewhat. You go through the list, just the types of Alex Bregmans, Kramer Robertson, guys that just had tremendous ability and flair. And that, you know, for a guy like Michael Braswell, as we talked about having this, this weekend, three for 10, played solid defensively. And I think sometimes when you have that light and who you're following, it's tough, it's tough to follow. But he's holding his own, I'll tell you that. Good lead over at first as the 1-1 one -one is swung on and missed. 93 on the fastball. But again, that's another one that's up in the strike zone and tough to get on top of. And it, 
It may come in at 93, but it seems to have the giddy up to 96 at that point. And it's good to see that. He's got the velocity, but not afraid to go down to 93 and locate. Again, they will keep Milam close at first. One out in the first base runner of the game. Getting there on a base on balls. Still early, top of the second here at the Joe. Runner goes, one, two, misses. The throw to second is not in time. That was a great jump, but he slid past the bag, and the tag is applied. Milam retired, a good job by Max Grant. Staying with that one as Milam had his hand slip off the base, and right there to make the call was Seth Buckminster. Great jump by Milam. He had the bag, but slid past it. Max Grant heads up play, keep kept the tag on there and that's why baseball is a game of inches now a 2-2 hit softly towards short backhanded lebron what a play for out number three another beautiful day in tuscaloosa some clouds but the sun working its way through them at the moment as will hodo leads things off against samuel dutton who Got the side in order in the Bama first. Hodo one of eight so far. Pops that one up shallow left field. Should be easy for Pearson. And he will indeed make the grab for out number one. Dutton getting the first four that he faces and a little activity in the Tiger bullpen. You said it at the top, really not expecting much more than a couple of innings and beginning to loosen up. Aiden Moffitt, the sophomore righty, saw briefly for LSU. Cade Snell, the junior DH, hits this one back up the middle and through for the first hit of the game for either side. So Snell gets Bama a base runner. That'll bring up TJ, or excuse me, hit 339 with men on base. 316 overall. His 49 RBIs currently tied for the team lead with Gage Miller. Takes ball one inside. Look at TJ's numbers comparing last year in Oxford playing for Ole Miss, his final year with the Rebels, and this year. Chopper foul and a break for the Crimson Tide as that would have easily been too. Not foul by a lot, but clearly wide of the bag. One one misses low. And that's for the Alabama hitters. Dutton report on him. He likes to work fast and he's going to come at you early. And so going possibly two to three innings, I think Coach Johnson would be happy if he can make it one time through the through the order. Conservative on the part of Snell at first and a good thing because that was a heck of a recovery on the part of Neal behind the plate for the Tigers. He would have had a better than average chance of getting Snell if he tried to advance on that ball in the dirt. Three balls and a strike now to McCants. One out here in the Bama second. Scoreless game and the Tide trying to change that. A cut for McCants that had he connected may have just done that, but he came up empty and the count's full. You saw on his average this series, he's three for seven. When T.J. McCants is hitting the ball well, it's usually going the opposite way. See if he can work that way. Fastball just missed up and in. Not by a lot. I mean, barely outside the zone. According to Trackman, but strike zone clearly visible to us. 
if you're plate umpire Mayhew Edwards, you got to go with what you see, and he got it right according to the digital assistance that we get. Here's Matt Gassetti. Bam, a catcher hitting 331 on the year, four homers. He's driven in 37, and he takes ball one outside. A glance towards second. And a 1-0 that clips the outside corner. It's one and one. Senior Matt Gassetti got recognized yesterday with the family. He's been a key cog behind the plate for Alabama since he transferred from Florida. The 1-1. One, one. Down and away. Baseball giveth, baseball taketh away. <laughs> Tides lost a player to Gainesville. They have, that was after they had gained one in Matt Gassetti a couple of years ago. 2-1. Lifted foul back and out of play. There's very few times when you get a catcher that he's really good defensively, which Matt Gassetti is, but he's last three or four SEC series, his offensive production has really taken off, and he's seen the ball really well and in a great opportunity right here. 2-2. Two -two. Saw fly to right side. That's going to get through and into right field for a base hit. But because it was hit so softly and hung in the air, it was a late break from second by Snell, so the Tide's not able to get the run home. If that's a two-out situation, Snell scores easily. But he had to hold up just to make sure Milam didn't catch it and have a chance to double him up at second base. And here we are again. William Hammeter coming to the plate. One of the Tide's hottest hitter as of late. And being a hot hitter doesn't mean you always tear the cover off the ball. Sometimes a little dribbler will make you a hero. As was the case on Friday night in the game winner. Hits that one towards center field and sinking for a base hit. One run is in. McCants will hold up as Bama goes station to station on the RBI from William Hammeter. His ninth of the season in the time. He got the emergency start. Comes up empty on the first pitch. And it's 0-1 to the Canadian from New Brunswick. Drew a walk and is only at bat of the series. That was late last night. That one bounces away from the catcher. Here comes McCants. He will score. And Alabama has taken a 2-0 lead. That'll be a pass ball, I believe. Charged to Neal. We'll wait and see. Brady Neal making his first start this series. Malazzo had caught the first two games. Brady Neal's more of the offensive yeah. catcher for the Tigers. That is a pass ball, and that's a ground ball to the right side that'll get another run home. Grant does his job as crossing will be Gassetti. Moving up to third will be Hammeter. And boy, the Tide really maximizing their opportunity so far. A 3 0 lead in the top of the order back around. Don't want to leave any meat on the bone if you're the Tide. Coach Rob Vaughn talked about it. He's trying to find some silver lining. This morning we're talking about Friday and Saturday's execution of runners in scoring position. He said, hey, that stat was so bad because we were getting guys on, we just couldn't get them in. Yeah. It's not like they were being shut down completely. And Putting the ball in play is a good starting point. Bama has done that. Also got benefit of a wild pitch. Two out, a man at third, and the 1-0 to Miller. Beautiful pitch right there from Moffitt as it caught the inside corner. Miller popped out to first base, his first at bat. We talked about Moffitt, his primary pitch is the fastball, and he, wanted, he wants to work on the outer half. He's still developing slider, which you saw last pitch. 
He feels most confident running with that fastball. Miller's only had one hit in seven at bats this weekend. He does have an RBI, but below what we have seen him do this year. As that one's lifted foul and it will drift out of play. So two and two with two gone. Three runs across for Alabama here in the second. And in a spot where a base hit or another wild pitch perhaps could get Hamiter in as well. And there it does bounce away, but a tough break for the Tide is fielding it and making the tag is Neal for the out. It's a brick wall at the backstop, and the carom was perfect to Neal and Hammond. Neal, Kling, and Brown, bottom third of the order due up. As the first offering here in the third is not what Hess wanted to see, a hit batsman on the very first pitch. So Neal, the catcher, will reach. Him right on the heel. Not the first pitch for Ben Hess that has gotten away from him. Let's see if Tigers can get something going off of that. Here's Paxton Kling, the center fielder. 218 average on the year for him as he takes a called strike one. Kling one for four on the weekend with a run scored in an RBI. LSU hitting 290 as a club through the first two games as that squibber towards right. It's going to keep slicing, and it's foul. Luke Coleman got the win yesterday. The former Bama pitcher now wearing purple and gold improved to seven and three as he went five and two thirds. Four hits, two runs, only one of them earned with four walks and a couple of strikeouts. He left the game in the sixth, having thrown 95 pitches. 0-2 upcoming from Hess. And that's a beautiful breaking ball that splits the heart of the plate. Kling knew it. And he becomes strikeout victim number five on the day of Ben Hess. Really like to see that from Ben Hess bouncing back, going right back to the curveball and not messing around. You got him 0-2. That's what you, you wanted from Ben Hess. He's not going to waste any more pitches. Let's go right at him. There's one rip, but right into the glove of Hodo. And what do you know? Stepping on the bag for the three unassisted double play. Congratulations again on the win yesterday. First things first, did you find the right dugout? I mean, you know, force a habit. It'd be easy to, to walk to the other one, but I guess you're you're custom down to the purple and gold. Oh, uh, yeah, definitely. I mean, I came through the visitor's dugout, so it was pretty easy. <laughs> <laughs> you, you're definitely at home, and you looked at home on the mound yesterday as well. Thank you. Yeah, tell us about the mindset coming into that game is we know you and how steady you are. Not a guy that's going to get wrapped up in the potential emotion of facing a former team. What was it like for you to work your way through that ball game, though? Uh, yeah, I'd say I don't have much emotion about it. I mean, it's another baseball game. you got to stay focused. doesn't matter who you're playing. So, yeah. Luke, this is David. Want to talk to you. Watching your stuff, we know that you have – three quality plus pitches seem like you didn't have as many strikeouts as typically in your prior starts but you found a way to let your defense work able to go deeper in the game can you talk about kind of the mindset of making all your pitches so you could go deeper into the game uh yeah i always like weak contact helps with pitch count i had that one long in right. but i always like punch outs but i'll take the weak ground outs and all that i just feel like i was able to mix my off speed really well and basketball basketball command's been a little shaky the past two weeks got to fix that up but 
I'd say the off speed was was there. Luke, congratulations on all your success. Great to visit with you and uh, appreciate it. Hey, we got to give you a chance. Everybody else has been wishing Happy Mother's Day oh, out yeah. there, so we'll let you fire one out if you uh, need to. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. I love you and have a great day. Appreciate you, man. Thanks so much. Luke well Coleman. Luke Coleman with us, the uh, Tiger right-hander who's really done a great job in Baton Rouge after doing a great job in Tuscaloosa. A guy, you, you, you've used the phrase a pro and that demeanor that he has really seems to apply to that young man as well. Seems like slow heartbeat, and you gotta have that as a starter. You know, bullpen guys are, you got that elevated heartbeat at times you're coming in and blasting it as hard as you can go. Luke Holman just seems like he's just, stays cool and confident, and he did that yesterday. After the leadoff single from Alabama's Gage Miller, Ian Petrut standing in. Petrut's lined out sharply to second, his first at bat. First full inning of relief work for Aiden Moffitt, the righty for LSU. As he falls behind 3-0. And, oh. and again, Jay Johnson went pretty much all chips in with his bullpen on Friday and Saturday through his ace and just missed being rewarded for it in Griffin Herring. And then yesterday, after Gage jump gave them a good start, Nate Ackenhausen did a really good job late in the ball game, getting them to the end game situation. And now they've got activity going again, just trying to piece it together on a Sunday and hope they can start to swing the bats if you're LSU hitless right now through the first three frames. And Chris, you talked about it. For those that didn't get to tune in on Friday, Coach Johnson put his chips, put his best arms in there. And I mean, LSU had the lead on the road on Friday night, up to four runs at one point. And that's exactly what you're supposed to do. You go find a way on the road to get it. We'll talk about it later. Tide found a way to really steal that game. Yeah. Steal, gifted, however you want to put it. Bamba. Good eye in drawing a couple of walks, then a hit batsman before a tapper from William Hameter was one that turned into a two-run opportunity for the Tide and a walk-off after the throwing error by the Tigers catcher, Alex Malazzo. And now Bama with two on and nobody out. And the shortstop in Justin LeBron coming to the plate. He'll show bunt, and he'll take the breaking ball for a strike. Boy, that's a heck of a pitch. If you're Aiden Moffitt, you virtually are guaranteed of a bunt situation right there and still deliver a breaking ball for a strike. So I believe that the umpire called a timing issue on Justin LeBron. He was down 0-1 before he stepped to the box. Wow, so he was 0-2, and a sinking liner that is dropped. Miller. A late break and moving in at second with heads up base running was Petrutz. And that's a great pickup on your part, DK, as Alabama was fortunate. 0 2 count after the timing ruling against the hitter. And he puts it in play and gets a break as this one just pops out of the glove of Pearson in left field. Garlis, you find a way. To move it to the next guy. Bama's loaded. Up. There's a first pitch fastball outside to Will Hodo, the first baseman. See his numbers on the year. He flew out to left field his first time up. Perfect scenario for Lore and Coach Johnson right here with three lefties due up. Here's a nice pitch. Hammered him in on the hands right in the inside corner of the plate to get it to one and one. Hodo with a 405 on base percentage. Batting with the bases juiced out in front of that slow breaking ball at 81. Heck of an offering there from Lohr. They would love to get one right here without Anybody moving up, it's already a 3-0 Bama lead. We're only in the third, and the bases are loaded with nobody out. 
fastball missing away. Check that, I'm sorry, off speed away. We didn't get to talk about who let off the inning too much, Gage Miller. We were interviewing Luke Holman. Gage Miller started off this inning. He's remained relatively quiet this weekend. Tiger's done a good job pitching to him. Fights that one off. And Hodo does struggle. A guy who's normally a pull hitter, he will struggle with lefties, especially guys who can throw that breaking ball low and away. That one is lifted towards left field. Should be deep enough to score. Miller is coming in, will be Pearson. He does make the grab, and he'll make the throw. It's going to come to the plate, tagging and advancing will be Petrutz for the Crimson Tide. Bama runs the base as well. They get two more in scoring position. One comes across as the Tigers do get the first out of the sack fly. RBI from Will Hodo, and the Tide pushes the lead now to four to nothing. It's really good heads up baseball all the way around for Alabama. Will Hodo got down in a two strike count. Have to find a way to get in the outfield. He did that. Pearson makes the throw home, overthrows the cut man. And Petrutz and Justin LeBron heads up, stealing another bag. That one's chopped foul by Snell, who singled and scored his last at bat. That was just an inning ago in Bama's three-run second. Base hit here, they could at a minimum duplicate that frame. Here in the third. Tigers defensively, all the infielders cheating in. So if you're Petrutz at third, you got to see it through. Can't read. Ground ball, you're probably hanging tight right here. In SEC play, Snell really doing a nice job. You swing 372 at, against SEC pitching, you got something going. Tremendous hitter. And all the while, throwing on Tuesdays for the Tide as their starter. Great two-way player. Infield drawn in. And slap foul. Boy, he really tried to slip one past White, the third baseman, just a tad late on that swing, but understandable on the 90-mile-per-hour fastball from the left side. And we talked about with Lord, that's exactly the approach you got to have. That one misses up and in. You're a lefty here, you're almost anything middle away, anything inside, you're, you're not even looking inside if you're relying solely on the report that you get. Payoff, rip, but right to the second baseman, Milam. It's why you play in if he's playing back. That's probably a one or two hopper. And a good chance that Petrutz is going to score from third. Instead, now it'll take a two out hit from TJ McCants. Good swing right there by Cade Snell. And Coach Johnson said he gets to talk with Coach Berkman every once in a while. That is. Get a third, two gone. Bama looking to add to a 4 0 lead here in the home half of inning number three in Tuscaloosa as McCants takes strike one at the knees. Nice pitch from Lore. Again, 90 from the left side to a lefty. Seems to have a little more oomph to it. Oh, 01. Upstairs. Count evens at a ball and a strike. As good as McCants is, you can't afford to pitch around him. You got a right handed batter next. And a guy who's got an even better average. That's in. Matt Gassetti. One one fastball outer half right at the no, at the uh, knees. 
And it's a ball and two strikes. See what Lohr throws him here. He's been good with a breaking ball. And a little nubber right side. Could be trouble. Milam charging. Fields throws. And it is just in time for the out. What a play, Stephen Milam. The freshman second base. And have a 4 nothing lead at this point in the game. That's a big hit off the bat of Pearson. Deep to right field, and that one's going to hit off the base of the wall. Hammeter gets it back in quickly. The throw's cut off, and it'll be a stand-up double for Pearson as he begins the LSU fourth in fine fashion. Hitting in the leadoff spot of the order today. A good way to get things going, especially with White and Jones due up next. Just looked like a fastball on the outer half. Pearson went and got a double, and this is exactly what the Tigers were hoping for to give Tommy White some guys on base. Hess has hit 95 and 96 on the gun with a fastball, but 93 with that one and was timed up well. Bama will gladly give the runner to third base, though. With Tommy White, a little dribbler to the right side, puts him at third. Again, that's... How good a hitter, though, Tommy White is. I know he would like to have had more, but still does his job getting the ball on the ground right side so that they can get the man to third for Jared Jones. It's exactly right. I think both sides will take that. I think Tommy White wants some more just the way he's been swinging the bat. One gone, a man at third here in the LSU Fourth inning. Jared Jones, his last 15 games, doing damage, hitting for average, but also eight home runs and 11 RBIs. First hit of the game for LSU, that double by Pearson. They'd love to have another one here. A little high on that fastball. Didn't miss by much. It's a big A-B for both sides right now. Tigers trying to draw blood. Ben Hess, see if he can get that second out. Two O is due. Could not connect on the breaking ball that was up, and that one definitely out of the zone. And that for Ben Hess right here, the leadoff double. That's the thing that the Tide wants to see is the response back to the game. 2-1, a beauty. Clips the outer edge at 87, and it's two balls and two strikes. The track man right there, literally on the corner. And a great pitch right there by Ben Hess. 2-2. Two -two. Foul straight back, boy. Good cut, but he changed a little bit of the eye level. That one was still the upper part of the zone, but down considerably from the last two pitches. And sometimes we talk about golf shaping, sometimes with release coming a little higher, or dropping the angle to get that run of a fastball running into the hitter. 2-2 two -two is due. That would just caught a bit of the bat of Jones. Man, that's a heck of an effort. Great battle right here. This is power on power. This is why you come to the baseball game, see guys like Ben Hess and Jared Jones going at it right here. Again, a 2-2 pitch. And that one, just a shade high. Definitely missed the zone. And I think that was probably, that was intentional by Ben Hess to get him to come back, possibly to set up the off-speed pitch. Let's see if he goes slider again. Payoff. And he bounces that one in. However, however, with all due respect to Larson, you get past White and Jones. 
353 hitter is the left-handed DH, but still a guy who is not at the threat level that Jones or White can be from a long ball standpoint. He does run well, though, so a ground ball is not a guarantee of a double play, even if it's right at somebody. Give a little credit to Jared Jones, too. That was a disciplined at bat. It That's was. hard to lay off that type of pitch. As aggressive and a good as hitter as you are, that's why Ben Hess buries one like that. Off speed misses low. For power hitters, even more of a challenge to, to be as disciplined as we saw Jones. A absolutely. I mean, you saw, if you watched the game on Friday, you saw his tape measure shot, shot that he hit, and you know he wants to do damage and get the Tigers on the board, and you're hoping that aggressiveness will spill over and extend the zone and hit and hit it. First time we've seen Hess hit the lower part of the strike zone and still find the mark in a while. 95 on that one on the lower inside part of the strike zone. 1-1, one, one. swinging and a miss, chased one. Boy, if you're looking at that strike zone and it's broken into a grid as it is on track man that was as opposite as it gets goes from lower third in upper third out the one two slap foul and out of play tried to sneak the fastball by him on the outer half and able to fight it off keep the count at one and two Chris knows I'm not afraid to take a guess at what somebody's going to throw. I was thinking Ben Hess was going to go with off-speed pitch. I will say, though, if you're the Tide, you feel really good that he's got a lot of confidence in fastball. Here comes another one, too. A little tapper right side. The tag will be made, and the throw is late to first. Grant was thinking I got no time to get a flip for a 4-6-3, maybe a four unassisted three, but not even that was going to pay off. And again, I think Alabama will give up a run right there in order to get the out and make sure a guy stays at first. That's exactly right. I, I think Max Grant, Grant makes a heads-up play, get the runner going from first to second. And if you're Ben Hess, this is what we talked about starting out the gate is minimizing the damage. If you walk away with only giving up one run, now we're not out of this inning, but if he's able to do that, I think you take that as a win. Especially for him, because it's been a big inning and a really big inning for the opposition that's been his undoing at times. If he can have a hiccup and no more than that, I think he would indeed consider it a win. Throw over, keeping Larson close. Larson with good speed. He is six of six on stolen base tries this year. We talked about it in the prior inning. Friday night, LSU used their bullets in the back end of the game with her closer. Alabama has Alton Davis, Braylon Myers, their top tier relievers available. And Ben Hess knows if he can get this game to possibly the fifth or the sixth inning with a lead, you can go to those guys on Sunday. Again, the throw over, and what a break for Alabama as Will Hodo had it scoot underneath his glove, but the ball hit it. First base umpire Alfredo Burkeen and kept it playable and kept LSU from being able to advance the runner into scoring position. Wow. I've never seen that. <laughs> Here's the 1 0 swing and a miss, and it's 1 and 1. 
it happened so fast, but that's one that's going to get away far enough that Larson's going to be able to advance. At minimum, one back. You're right. I think he had Mayhew Edwards. Tillon Hess, he's got to wait. Now everybody's set. 1-1. One, one. That one's blocked beautifully on the part of Gassetti. Saw it last year. He was such a vital part of Alabama's run to an NCAA Super Regional, but May not be the first guy you think of around the league, but boy, is he solid. He really is. You know, we talked about his defensive prowess, calls the game on his own. Coach Jackson gives him the freedom to do that. Popped up, mile high, shallow right field. Coming in, Hammeter camps out under it, makes the grab for out number three. So minimal damage done by the Tigers, but they do get on the board thanks to their first. For Alabama and Coach Vaughn, he set an expectation of looking out for each other's captains, leaders, as we talked about in Saturday's game. It's just cool to see those type of moments. We get to absolutely give some props to mom. Gassetti. Ahead in the count, 2-0. He singled and scored in the second. Little tapper right back to the mound. Lohr will field and fire easily for the first out here in the Alabama fourth. Boy, big for him to try to put up zeros right here. After you get one, you don't want to give it right back to the Crimson Tide. And it all starts with getting that first out. And I think Coach Johnson thinking at very minimum, see how he did against a very good three left-handed batters in Hodo, Snell, and McCants. And getting out of trouble, there's two more lefties coming. Tell you what, William Hammeter is hitting it on the button right now. Even though it's tracked out by Kling in center field, William Hammeter now looking like the William Hammeter in his freshman and sophomore year for the Crimson Tide, where he was such a promising prospect. It's there, and it's starting to come back for him as well. It's just a consistent swing, and I understand for William Hammeter, you got you to consistently be in the lineup getting at three or four at-bats every single day to get in a groove, and that's what Will Hammeter's getting now. We talked about it. He'd been the left-handed bat off the bench, and it's so hard to get momentum and pinch hitting at any point. doesn't matter who you're facing. It's really tough. It's just really good to see it all coming together for him his senior year. Max Grant, who grounded out to bring in a run, his first at bat. Falls behind in the count 0-2. Very quickly, two out. For the Tide here in their half of the fourth inning. And almost <laughs> three pitch out right there. Barely missed the bottom of the zone. Been really impressed with Lore. And so too is Jay Johnson. And Alabama should be as well. He has cut him up. Really nice outing. Five out of third innings on the hill. Six hits, three runs. All earned. Unfortunately for him and the tide, he was tabbed with a loss. But freshman, it seems like you were very, very comfortable out there in what was a pressure pack situation, even though you didn't get the decision you wanted. Yes, sir. Uh, yeah, I mean, I had to make a few adjustments early on, but once I kind of got my groove, I started settling in better towards the end of the game. Zane, this is David, and you've kind of touched on that. And sometimes it, for pitchers, as you know, I mean, you, you're a starting guy and good pitches, and sometimes you have to be gutsy and you don't have the command or the velocity is just not there, but you have to find a way to get it going. You've got the strikeouts going. Can you talk about kind of throughout the game where you just found a way and what what little bit of the makeup that gets you got you there? Um, yeah, I think a lot of it is having the confidence to go in and out, um, especially going in. Like, I think I threw a couple inside fastballs to, you know, uh, Tommy White and Big Bear and 
it can be scary trying to get in on those guys. You know, if you, <laughs> it runs over the middle of the plate, it might go a long ways. But that's the kind of gutsy pitch you got to make to get those guys out. I would imagine early in your freshman year, there's not a lot you were trying to offer to anybody. You're still trying to figure it out for yourself. Mm -hmm. But in a game like this, despite the fact he's a veteran, what are you, if anything, saying to a guy like Ben Hess, and what are you seeing from him on the hill that's allowed him to be so successful? Man, he's just, uh, he's just he's attacking the strike zone and uh, throwing lots of strikes, and obviously he's got elite stuff. And, I mean, all he has to do is throw strikes with that kind of stuff. And as you can see, he's pretty successful right now. Zane, we appreciate the time and the insight so very much. We appreciate you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Zane Adams, freshman right, uh, freshman pitcher for Alabama, kind enough to join us here on his off day. <laughs> Trying to get, or watching as Alabama tries to get a very important 12th win in Southeastern Conference play. We talked about it yesterday that the closer you get to the 500 mark in SEC play, the closer you are to being a lock for an NCAA regional berth. 16 wins has been a definite over the last several years. 15, it's going to take a minor miracle to keep you out. Even 14, you probably don't have to sweat it a lot. But if you're below that number, you got fingers crossed that there aren't a lot of upsets in the postseason in conference tournaments. Knots in your stomach. You're second guessing every single game on your record. But both these teams still have it all in front of them. Ben Hess looking like the Ben Hess of a year ago prior to his injury. Pitching with confidence, not just mixing velocity as we've seen him go with the fastball 93 to 96 but also the ability to change locations with that so big and that high fastball hitter couldn't get on top of as now Neal swings and hits a fly ball a mile high but very much playable for Hamner and near the line he'll make the grab for out number two and we t you talked about it last inning when Hess was pitching is his location he was fastball away low and then next pitch he would throw fastball up and in but was also still in the zone and he's putting his setup pitches in the right place we talk about when he was in a one two count against Jared Jones he elevated a fastball exactly where he wanted to and was burying the slider did not get him to bite but that's just a good at bat all the way around and you're starting to see Ben Hess put it together Two outs, nobody aboard for LSU here in the top of the fifth inning. And taking strike one, Paxton Kling, the sophomore center fielder for the Tigers. 0 for 1 on the day. One of the six strikeout victims of Ben Hess so far, and he got a bunch early. How much does that set the tone to see him fan four over the first two frames? It, it frees everybody up because... Everybody knows, when I say everybody, the tied players in that dugout know what type of pitcher he is, and they know when he starts getting confident, you just want to play right behind it, and you know he's, if he's getting weak, he's probably going to be getting weak contact, and you want to keep it rolling. 95 of the fastball, upper part of the zone. Does that, does that become 97, 98 when it's up there and you're trying to catch up to it as a hitter? It, it looks like that, what I was going to say, a former teammate of mine. He's just starting to look like a Lance Lynn type of pitcher yeah. where that fastball's heavy. Of course, Lynn, great at Ole Miss where David started his collegiate career and then able to parlay that time from Oxford into what became a very nice major league career. For Lynn, one of the greats that has come through the Southeastern Conference as the 2-2 just misses inside. One of those, the traits that he had was, and if you look in Major League Baseball, when he was throwing, he had the most fastballs thrown percentage-wise. And it was just bully baseball how he pitched. And that's what Ben Hess is doing right now. Chopper left side, LeBron. Tough play, and he can't make it in time, although the throw was accurate. 
just too soft of a chopper. And you also got a guy that runs really well, Kling, as we said, a center fielder defensively. And it'll put you out there if you ain't got wheels. And we saw those there. Yeah, Justin LeBron made a top 10 type of play that you might see on Sports Center later, just couldn't duplicate it again. And that's Kling running hard out the box. So two out, but a man aboard now for LSU in the nine hole hitter and catcher Jake Brown standing in. It was a DH yesterday before, or actually in the, yeah, it was the game yesterday that we saw him come in in a pinch hitting role. Couple of homers on the year. One zero inside corner with a fastball for a strike. And you see him continue to challenge fastball inner half. That's not over the heart of the plate. And I think if you're clean, you got to be. If you're not stealing, you got to be looking dirt ball read. See if he's going to bury one. See if you can steal a bag. Soft roller out to short. LeBron goes the short route to get the force and retire the side halfway home weekend and next, and perhaps the following week if they can advance to Hoover to improve on that. But trailing 4-1 here in Tuscaloosa, as the Tide tries to put a little ice on what has been a hot LSU team. Gage Miller with an even count at one ball, one strike for the Crimson Tide third baseman. He singled and scored in the third. Popped out in the first. And Eula plus, he's got two pitches that are plus pitches, 92, 94, and that fastball's got some ride on it. All that means is that ball's gonna start running into the right-handed hitters. Good life and a slider. Had some good depth. There's a shot towards center field that's going to be gloved by Kling. And Miller retired for the second time today. It'll bring up Ian Petrutz. Buddy Justin Brandt just put a bug in my ear that is a, it's a good call. Fidel Uyoa said he's a California native. Guy that also used to wear the gold jersey with the Oakland A's, Raleigh Fingers. He's got a mustache that rivals it, look at that. That's a heck of a call by Justin. You don't just show up with that. Not that, no, I, would, not that I would know anything about that. It's taken me a while to get to where I can understand and appreciate <laughs> facial hair, but Yoas definitely got the Raleigh Fingers look going there. He would like to throw like the Hall of Famer. Three balls and a strike now to Petrutz, who lined out and walked his last at bat. Check swing, but he went around, and Petrutz now has it at three and two. Payoff popped up a mile high on the infield. Looks like it's in foul territory, and May be an issue. It would have been if Neal had been trying to make the play, as I think he was looking right up into the sun, but the first baseman Jones had a better look, better angle, and was able to make the play. That's Jared Jones all day, and I think he knew that. Brady Neal just was just looking at him like, hey, I'm not even gonna get in your way. But no, that is a, uh, us first basemen's all the way. You do not wanna make that play for the catcher. 
Here's LeBron batting now with two outs and nobody aboard. Lively fastball right there from Eula. You see right there we talked about running into the right-handed hitter. He started it outside of the strike zone and just inched it back to hit the corner. Uyoa rocks and fires. Fastball catches the outer half and right on the corner. A ball and two strikes. Did a great job getting ahead of the count to Bama hitters so far. Also 94 on the gun. About 96 with that one, and it just missed. In fact, Neil thought it was time to head to the dugout. I can't say that I disagreed with him. Although, Trackman shows the pitch was just off the plate. Two two misses low. Talked about. Oh yeah. Now look. Yoa's still got a little work to do, but man, that is a nice start. <laughs> and a heck of a find by our producer, Bree Falcon and company in the truck. Payoff, misses low, and that's a good at bat for LeBron. Anything to break up the rhythm of a guy who's been dealing pretty well since coming on. Fidel's come in, and he has established his presence here, again with a strong stash and throwing some fuzzballs, fastballs in there. Here's Hodo trying to keep it going for Alabama in the fifth. Hits that one on a liner. That was a one hopper backhanded beautifully by Brad in the NCAA tournament field in two weeks also. Three weeks, actually, as that hard hit grounder off the bat of Pearson is gobbled up by Will Hodo. One pitch, one gone here in the LSU sixth. And here's the resume for the Crimson Tide. About as strong as it gets, again, if you're below 500 in the league, that is. But as we talked about it for Rob Vaughn and his squad, no shame in being four games out at this point, especially with a chance legitimately to get it to 15 and 15 by conference in. It's definitely on the table for the Tide. It all starts with possibly getting this one today. They end up, like we talked about, going on the road to Auburn. She got the SEC tournament. You possibly get at least two wins. And depending on how Georgia and South Carolina play out, there's a chance you could back end getting a host regional site. Well, we have seen already in this frame, Hess still mid-90s and above with the fastball, but comes back with a 78-mile-per-hour breaking ball to get White out in front. Misses away there on an 0-2 pitch. And his off-speed has had good bite. And he is, up until now, handled Tommy White. Challenged him with a fastball right down the heart of the plate there, but couldn't barrel it up. The count stays at one and two. Sign of Ben Hess. You saw him deep breath right there singing. Hmm. I got, that was not where I wanted to leave that fastball. I got lucky on that one. Down and away with that one as the count evens at two and two. So he's still under 80 pitches at the moment. And also still hitting 95 north on the heater. That's a pretty good indication that he's definitely got it rolling today. If the scoreboard with a run and only two hits didn't tell you enough, maybe that could convince you. That's one of the best hitters in the country, and he just struck out for the second time today. And that's just, I'm going to come right at you with my best fastball. He elevated it. That was not a strike type of pitch that he was trying to get him to chase above the letters, put it where he wanted it. Got a big 
second out right there. Righty righty matchup with Jared Jones standing in, and he starts him off with a strike. Got him shaded to the left side and a tad more. Grant, the second baseman, literally right behind the bag as that one's fouled out of play right side. It's quickly 0-2. I can tell you, Coach Jason Jackson, the pitching coach for Alabama, is watching that number of pitches. When he's gotten to right around 100, that's really the max of where you want to get him to. So you're watching that kind of in the low 90s to 95, where you feel like that's, that's where he's emptied the tank. Yeah. Tank appears to be full at the moment. And I would say he's put premium in there today. 4-1. Um, great body control, making a good throw off balance. T.J. McCants, who walked and scored in the second, grounded out in the third. That was off his first pitch here in the sixth inning. You see his numbers on the season. He's tied for the team lead in RBIs, or was coming into the ball game with Gage Miller. One ball, one strike. Came up empty on that breaking ball. He's down one and two. Gage Miller and T.J. McCants starting out the year were red hot. Then T.J. kind of hit a rough patch and started SEC play and his sense has really picked it up. Couldn't get him that time. Uyoa recording the strikeout. That is his second winner. Check that, his first one of the day. He's been really good, though. Ooh. Ooh, yeah. That's, that's, that's a nasty pitch right there. I have turned the good kid into the bad kid. They're going to move our desk apart here. Here's Gassetti, who's one for two. Are you saying I'm going to move to the the they'll, back of the they'll put you back, back at the, the class, front of the class. Front and, of the class, okay. Yeah. Put me away from all you good kids before I get you in trouble. Two balls, no strikes with two outs. Said he trying to extend this bottom of the sixth. Takes a strike. It's two and one. Activity in both bullpens is that one missed a tad high. More significant from Alabama's perspective, as you see the ace of the bullpen at Alton Davis. Didn't throw Friday or Saturday. Well rested and ready to go today. As Cassetti chops that one foul and gets the count full at three and two. Ideally for Alabama, Gassetti would come on in the eighth. Or Davis would come on in the eighth, excuse me. Getting loose, and it won't take him long to get in a spot where he's ready to go, but they'd love to get one more frame at a minimum out of Ben Hess. And assuming no change in the score, I think that's I think that's the setup that the tide is looking for. Get one more inning. But via we were talking about the number of pitches, number of pitches really dictating that for Ben Hess. Soft liner to right, sinking fast in a beautiful diving grab from Brown to rob him of a base hit. Heck of a play by the LSU trying to get something going. That has been an issue against right-hander Ben Hess, who's been tremendous today. Starts Larson, the DH, off with a breaking ball for strike one. Larson, like many of his teammates, 0 for 2, although he does have an RBI. 
The only one of the day for the Tigers. Get into a fielder's choice in the fourth. Get their lone run in so far. A lot of baseball to be played, though. Last night outs can be difficult. As Hess asks for and receives time. As he has to get the shoe tied. He broke he a lace. lace. He did. Got to get that racket restrung. Huh. New meaning to coming out your shoes. Well, that's true. I got three hours credit for that in college. Well, I would have gotten three hours if I passed it. But man, that is, uh, as they got well enough to get one on Sunday. Now Hess able to deal a 1-1 pitch. Shoes work. It's one and two. Release worked. It did indeed. Ashton Larson waiting on a 1-2 pitch and rolling it foul. Mark Wanaka, the first base coach. Get out of the way of that one. Wanaka, excuse me. The one, two. High and away. And as good as Ben Hess has pitched thus far, you know the Tigers offense has the capability to string some hits together. So you got to continue to lock in. Off speed high. And the count's now full at three and two. Doesn't seem like much, but right now anything that LSU could get going positively would be quite a plus for him. They'd love to get to somebody other than Hess. And boy, if he lays off, they may have gotten a chance, but instead he goes around for strike three. Larson just couldn't lay off what he knew was going to be ball four. It's just a big third out, and you can see that was that wasn't that was where he wanted that up and away. And we talked about how well Milam and Braswell have swung the bats, that was the type of opportunity to get those guys on. Do you think he was guessing maybe breaking ball and thought that may backdoor him, and that's why he went ahead and offered? I do at this point because you've, he's established fastball. He was cheating on that. And so sometimes as a hitter, when some you get a pitcher that's so comfortable in the pitches, you're, you're uh, sometimes committing a little too early. And that's what you saw right there. Milam takes a strike, and it's one and one to the Tiger second baseman. Switch hitter. Takes that one away. He is 0 for 1 today. Walked in the second and then flew out to right field when he came to the plate in the fourth. I've been very impressed with Stephen Milam watching him in person for the first time. Freshman. Really swung the bat well, disciplined, and has made some very good defensive plays. A very good get for Jay Johnson and the Tigers. Two balls, two strikes with one out, nobody aboard. Shift on to the right side. Miller on the first base side of second. As that beautiful breaking ball caught not just the outside corner, that clipped the outer half. Or appeared to. Trackman says, no, it got the edge. But either way, it was right there at the strike zone. And a nice frame on the part of Gassetti as well. You could tell Milam did not agree, but a career-high outing for Hess as he's now at six and two thirds and he is still cooking with gas. That fastball at 94. Right down the heart against Braswell who's 0 for two. A little high with that one, his 97th pitch of the day. 
It's his last frame, and it may be his last batter to face as well. A lefty and Neal's in the on-deck circle. And if for some reason he's not able to get out of the inning right here, I may go ahead and hand it over to Davis. 2-1 pitch. Clips the outside corner again. And you see right there, that's 2-1 advantage count. You know fastball's coming as a hitter, and you dot it up and paint one on the outer half. Down and away there to even it at 2-2. Two and two. Look, that previous pitch, and again, we've got the benefit of the track man shows exactly where a pitch is, and it was on the outer edge, but it was touching it as the 101st pitch of the day is chopped foul off the bat of Braswell and lined it up again. As a starting pitcher, regardless of Ben Hess, you usually want, have one pitch that you can command and feel good with in an outing. Ben Hess has really had two pitches that he's felt really good in any count. Chopper just passed the bag at third. I'm fortunate that one was in foul territory. That's going to be too easily for Braswell if that one is fair. But it stays at three and two. Hess trying to end the seventh right here. And he can't do it. And that may just be his last pitch of the day. As he's now at 103. And with a lefty up. And the ace of your bullpen, also a lefty ready to go. See what Jason Jackson opts to do. And this is a very good left-handed hitter in Brady Neal. Talked about him getting the start today, but this is a guy that's got very good power numbers. For Rob Vaughn. Well, he's going to let him pitch to him. And that one is hit a mile high, but shallow right. A late break from Hameter, and he can't get there. It'll drop in for a base hit. A tough break there for the Crimson Tide as it was hit right off the end of the bat. Hameter had problems picking it up. He may have even broken back initially, anticipating that one going towards the wall. Instead, he was late trying to get in. And rather than the day being done, with an out for Hess, LSU's going to bring the tying run to the plate in Paxton Kling. Starts off with a breaking ball that just missed the mark. Davis, the Hueytown Golden Gopher, has been fantastic for the Tide as that one's ripped foul past the bag. Foul ball off the bat of the pinch hitter for the Tigers. That is Ethan Fry. Sophomore getting his first at bat, I believe, of the series. One ball, one strike to him. And that curve splits the heart of the plate. Two out, men on the corners. A ball and two strikes. And that one bounces away from Gassetti, and they will give up the base to Neal at second. A wild pitch, but that's one they're not overly concerned about right now. Their primary worry is number 33 in gold. Get him. The guy at second doesn't matter. Two out, now two in scoring position, and a 2-2. Two -two. Just missed, and Gassetti having some problems handling the last two from Davis. He almost got handcuffed right there. He was 
trying to frame that. Ball kept running. And then he tried to move the glove. Caught enough of it. Payoff pitch is due to Fry. And it's a soft liner gloved it short by LeBron. And Davis comes on to get out of. Can clinch today with a victory in a Missouri loss. Obviously, the loser of this one still doesn't have a spot wrapped up as that one is ripped foul past the bag. Of course, the tiebreaker in head-to-head -head would favor LSU should the two teams be even. But Alabama would have a two-game edge over LSU if the Crimson Tide gets this win today. Right now, they're in a good spot, but a long way from the finish line. 4-1 advantage. But in the bottom of the seventh inning, William Hameter, who flew out to deep center in the fourth and singled in a run in the first, leads off in this inning against Fidel Ulloa. Ulloa's done a nice job in two innings of work, no hits, a walk and a strikeout. Gets a strike there right at the bottom of the zone, and it's two and two. Uyo has done a great job of establishing his presence. He's thrown all his pitches, fastball, slider, and you saw a changeup. Looked like he ran away from the left-handed hitter right there. He's, he's done a really good job since entering the game. Hammond are working with a full count. Nobody aboard as he starts off the bottom of the seventh. A piece of that one to stay alive, and the count stays at three and two. If you're the tide right here, it's a it's a 4-1 game. You want to be able to scratch one run across. Obviously, you want to get as many as you can, but getting one more for Alton Davis would be big. Left side through, base hit, Hammeter. Tell you what, that might be his last cut in a Bama uniform here at Sewell Thomas Stadium, and great to see him get to two for three on the day as he rolled it through that left side. A beautiful piece of hitting with two strikes. Really was. That's just what Coach Rob Vaughn has talked about, William Hammeter, all year. Just professional hitter, not trying to do too much, get two strikes, work the other way. Another left-handed hitter due up in Max Grant. Jay Johnson making the slow walk out to the mound where he's going to make another change. It's going to lefty lefty match up with Grant showing but a heck of a job just getting that one down and White's only play will be to first base. Man, that is an undervalued talent right there. The ability to get that bunt down on the ground somewhere, even though it was right at Tommy White, it still did the job. Tide is not, they don't have a lot of sacrifice bunts, but that was a very good bunt. You always want to get the bunt down early. Max Grant did that, and it looks like they're going to intentionally walk Gage Miller. That's a good move right there with first base open. And a right-handed batter at that. It's not as if Ian Petrutz is a sure out by any stretch. However, he is a lefty batter. He's about 56 points below Miller at the plate and 13 home runs less than the tied third baseman as well. And if you hit him, he's still gonna get a base and that's what happened there. Petrutz takes one for the team and it'll load him up with one out for the freshman, Justin LeBron. Just looked like a slider that just finding his release point, coming out of the pin, didn't get there didn't find the mark. As a hitter, you don't have to retreat. You can hold hold your body where it is, but you cannot go into it. You see it right here. Watch his reaction. He didn't lean into it. He didn't move out of the way, but he didn't really have a chance to. That's right. I, I think this is 
A good challenge, but it's not going to get overturned. As Christian Little makes his second appearance of the weekend, the St. Louis native is on for the 19th time this year. And again, he has been very effective this season. LeBron pops it up a mile high. The pitch that LSU wanted, infield fly rule in effect. And even though it was intentionally dropped, <laughs> can't blame Braswell for that, but it is the infield fly. Savvy move right there. It is. I like that. Don't assume the infield fly has been called. This is a perfect scenario right here for Christian Little. The reason he's in right here, he pitched on Friday. Good opportunity, but he's in there because he's got power stuff and hopefully to get a strike out here against Will Hodo. And Nate Yeski comes out again, the pitching coach to talk things over. And clearly from the reaction, there are those that have not yet made the last minute Mother's Day gift purchase and they're hoping to do so, get this game over with so they can they can go get it made. But yeah, smart move on the part of Braswell. Just just, just go ahead, just, make make sure they call it infield fly rule. He heard it from that umpire and goes, we'll see if any of these runners are yep. listening and paying attention. Guy strays off the base, you could still get the out. So two gone, bases loaded, and Will Hodo, who has an RBI on the day despite being hitless in three trips to the dish, stands in now. Mississippi native, batting with a tied runner at every plate, or every bag, I should say. He takes the first pitch for strike one. Hameter at third, Miller at second, Petrutz at first. Bama looking to add to a 4-1 lead here at the bottom of the seventh. Off speed high. Didn't miss by much. Good opportunity you saw right there. Will Hodo, three for three with bases loaded. Pretty good stat line, but he's a disciplined hitter, leads the team in walks. Fouls that one off, though. Right at the plate. And I think the catcher, Neal, was a little concerned about plate umpire Mayhew Edwards. Oh, yeah, I got him on the arm. That, he's a tough man back there, Mr. Edwards. Got protection, but that still stinks. Yeah. Here comes the one-two. Ripped, foul, past the bag at first. Boy, again, Jared Jones fielding the position pretty nicely. And a generous young man as well, giving a souvenir to the Bama faithful. A ball and two strikes. Two outs, a runner at every base as Bama looks to add to a 4-1 advantage here in the seventh inning. Rolled foul again. That's a nice pitch right there by Little. Looked like a cutter, mini cutter at 89. Again, this is a perfect scenario, possibly get the strikeout. He's got a curveball that he can mix in there and a fastball that he can ride up to 95-96. Here comes another one, two, and it's popped up again. Will it stay in play? It will, and White will make the grab for out number three. A great job out of the pin by Little. He's for the first time since 2016. Again, that was three head coaches ago. Mitch Gaspard, who was followed by a year, Greg Goff and Brad Bohannon, and now Rob Vaughn, not counting the half season, or a third of a season, I guess you'd say, of an interim head coaching job by Jason Jackson. 1-1, one, one, fouled back, and the count moves to 1-2. and two.
Breaking ball from Davis, misses low and in. Now to came on with two outs. Men on the corners when he checked into the game in the seventh. 2-2, two -two, ripped and knocked down by Hodo. Fair ball, Davis late getting there and the rudder is safe and Davis may have injured himself in the process. He slid into the bag, slow to get up and I think a little, little bit of pain in that one but more frustrated with himself for being late getting over to cover the bag. Couldn't tell if that was more of his wrist getting jammed there on that. Looked like he kind of halfway slid. It was a great play by Will Hodo to snag it. Jake Brown hustling down the line. Mm. And that is a breaking ball that was nowhere close. Hits Pearson and now with nobody out. The tying run's going to come to the plate for LSU. And it is a more than capable batter. Let's go look at the play that started the inning. And what exactly transpired for Davis. Boy, he just missed getting the out, but looked like he may have rolled that left ankle yeah. just a little bit. And Matt Gassetti is going to come out talk things over with Davis and I think try to settle him just a little bit. You got both Faye and Myers available, two right-handers. And even though you often think of righty versus righty, you also think best against best. And I think that's what Rob Vaughn and Jason Jackson are gonna do by staying with Davis against one of the top hitters in the country in Tommy White. This is Alton Davis's game like you said Chris at this point right now Tommy White's been quiet today but you know he's just one swing away and you can see it right there he he got a pitch that he was working aggressive to 94 mile per hour strike down the heart White did indeed foul off Breaking ball just missed the edge. Tide fans didn't like it, but that was not a strike. That one's ripped past Miller down the left field line. They'll send Brown around third. He will score without a throw, and the Tigers have made this a 4-2 ball game here in the top of the eighth inning. Miller gave it a good effort, David, but no chance for him to get this one. Yep, not a terrible pitch by Alton Davis, but Tommy White knows exactly what to do with it, hammers it into left field. You talk about the momentum of LSU getting off the field with the bases loaded and starting the inning off here. Big. And nobody out. Tying runs aboard. Go ahead, run at the plate here at the top of the eighth inning. And a dangerous man, to say the least, in Jared Jones. Takes a strike to begin the at bat. Now he is 0 for 2 on the day with a walk. Strikeouts in the first and sixth inning. But when you're getting now the third guy of the day on the hill, you start to feel a little different if you're the opposition and a wild pitch takes away the potential for a double play. Wow, a big mistake there for Faye in the Crimson Tide. Take away the double play and the put two in scoring position. And because of the score, you can't really afford to gift him first base. Did not offer. You got a tough out in Larson in the on-deck circle who's granted 0 for 3 today, but batting 346 on the year, it's not as if that's an easy 
hit bad in the cleanup spot next. Try to check his swing. He did go around, says the plate umpire Mayhew Edwards. And the counts even at two and two. Two balls, two strikes. The pitch down and away, and a great stop by Gassetti to save a run. Max done that all throughout his career here. I think we take, the Tide takes that for granted sometimes. It's just, he's able to do that each and every time. Payoff. Tap foul, he just got a piece of that one. Big battle right here. Huge point of this ball game with the Tigers down two. Roller left side, that'll get a run in. LeBron's play will be to first, and he makes it in time for the out. So the 6-3 put out, but an RBI for Jones. And now only one out, but it is the tying run down at third base. Again, we're in the eighth inning. And we had a baseball get loose in the LSU pin. Or actually, I think that was maybe some kids playing that had one get away, and it's happened again. Had an Uncle Sonny from New Orleans. Stuff like that would happen. He'd go, hey, why don't you play in the traffic? That's what Uncle Sonny from Louisiana would have told me right there. There's a strike. Ashton Larson swinging and missing a wicked slider there. The count goes to 0-2. Bottom fell out of that one, didn't it, partner? Very good slider. We talked about his fastball with downward run. Tyler Faye's go-to off speed is that slider right there and see if 0-2 might run it again. Chop foul as Larson gets a piece of it. And if you're Larson right here, Find a way to stay in the middle of the field. Get one in the outfield to tie this game up. And if you're Tyler Fay, it would be a huge strikeout. Fisted foul back, and Larson again stays alive. Three ball game, tying run, 90 feet away here in the top of the eighth inning for LSU. There's Tommy White. And there's Larson fouling it off again. That's three straight 0-2 pitches that he's been able to get a piece of. Nice battle right here. And back to Alton Davis. Hopefully nothing injury-wise or tweaked anything. Tyler Fay coming on behind him. There's a swing and a miss as he got him to chase one. Just out of the zone, but boy, it had some movement on it too. Looked like he pulled the string on that one. Definitely had Larson off balance right there. Looked like a changeup. 84 on the gun. Almost a little left to right movement, a little bit odd for a pitcher, but whatever the case, it's a huge second out as Milam stands in. Takes a strike to begin the at-bat. He's 0 for 2 with a walk and a strikeout today, but 
dangerous over the last two weeks, really all season long, but certainly the last two weeks for the Tigers. 0-1. Make it 0-2. Tyler Fay trying to maintain the lead for the Tide. And get them to the bottom of the eighth with a 4-3 advantage. And he just missed doing it. That one was out of the zone, but one that forced Milam to at least think about it. Outside there, and even the count at two and two. First place not on the line, but definitely postseason implications in this one. And the count has run full now, three and two. Faye was ahead, 0-2. Milam battles back to run it full. Let's see what happens here. Two out of the eighth. And ripped foul past the bag at first. You could tell from the reaction by Will Hodo. I think it's foul. Please be foul. Thank goodness it's foul. Whew. Indeed. Another payoff pitch is due to Milam. Here it comes. And it is caught. Second straight inning. Then a line out to LeBron ends the LSU chances. But the Tigers tack on to three. And Snell will try to lead things off for the Tide, looking for insurance here in the bottom of the eighth. Single and a run scored in the second for Snell. A line out. And a ground out in the sixth. Christian Little's been tremendous. He's faced two batters. But got a pair of pop outs. Got out of a potential mess for LSU. Kept it a 4-1 game. Now they've got it to 4-3 as the inside out swing results in a foul ball off the bat of Snell, and the count goes to one and two. We've tuned into a thriller, another SEC matchup with all the implications on the line. It's a one-run game. Both, like you said, Chris, Chris, Christian Little and Tyler Fay giving them everything they got to keep this game close. Boy, just got a piece of that one, and unfortunately, it got a piece of the catcher, Brady Neal, as well. It's always a luxury if you've got a, another catcher. LSU's got two very capable ones in that Malazzo and Brady Neal. You get down in this point in the season, those legs start to get heavy. It's great to give those guys a blow every once in a while. Good cut at that one, but couldn't quite dial it up. A ball and two strikes. Cade Snell trying to get the leadoff man aboard for Bama in the bottom of the eighth. Fights off another two-strike pitch. Same thing, still swinging, still battling. Still here in the Bee Gees. And we will in our sleep if this at bat continues for just a couple of more. Somebody needs pitches. to win this one. Somebody needs to win it. A little roller left side, Braswell fields and makes the play in time. Really good battle between Christian Little and Cade Snell. And look, he's favoring his left side a little bit. That foul ball prior to the ground out may have pulled a muscle.
Cantz 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored today. Down on the count 0-1. Drew a walk in the second, came across to score one of three for Alabama in that frame. Shows bunt, pushes it left side, charging it, firing, and not in time on the throw was White. Great stretch from Jones, but I love the thought there from T.J. McCants. He's been struggling today, David. Gets the bunt down with White playing back at third, and it results in a base hit. That's no coach putting that on. That's T.J. McCants seeing an opportunity, Tommy White. Makes a great effort Ooh. and a great stretch. But you got to change it up. Christian Little's getting confident on the mound, and that's how you do it. And the Tide has some action. Here's Gassetti hitting a fly ball to right. Playable, though, for Pearson. And a step onto the warning track. He makes the grab, tagging McCants. The throw is not in time. That's a great break from McCants. Good base running, and Gassetti a positive at bat, even though he doesn't get the hit there. That, I mean, T.J. McCants right there, I don't know if it's going to pay off for getting another run, but that's just a senior play right there. You saw Pearson, sorry, Jake Brown going out there to get the ball, somewhat Cadillacing to get that, and when he saw the momentum going there when he caught it, he wasn't going to be able to turn around and make a strong throw. Here's Hammeter. High fly ball to right. This one will stay in the yard, though. And the catch will be made for out number three. As Missouri lost to Auburn today, dropping the series to the Orange and Blue Tigers. Tyler Fay, the right-hander. Second inning of relief work as Braswell leads it off. 0 for 2 with a walk today for him. And a ball and a strike. Now the count to the Tiger shortstop. Again, the winner assured of a spot in Hoover. A lot of teams battling to get to the Hoover Met in two weeks. And with that, a very good chance of being an NCAA regional tournament team as that one's fouled off and the count Stays at a ball and two strikes. Tyler Fay coming on in relief for Alton Davis. Not the typical save opportunity, but after he did a tremendous job of cleaning up that mess to limit the damage, you roll with a guy that's hot. Two balls and two strikes now to Braswell, who grounded out in the second. He struck out in the fifth and drew a walk in the seventh. Fay rocks and fires, fisted foul. Ole Miss will be at home next weekend, taking on the Ole Miss Rebels. Alabama, excuse me, LSU at home to take on Ole Miss. The title be in Auburn. Not easy for either side with rivals on the opposite side. This is the only rival right now these guys are concerned about. Count stays full at three and two, you're right. Two programs that in the 90s were not just among the nations, but the conference elite. LSU the reigning champions and getting a leadoff single from Braswell to start the top of the ninth inning. Tying run is aboard. Appearance, he got the save against a very good Troy Trojans in Tuesday's matchup down there. So he's used to this type of environment. This is the guy for the Tide, best available arm. Going to give you that fastball, 91-92 slider and a change up against the left handers which I would definitely think that you're going to incorporate very much hopeful for a ground ball and a double play Neil the catcher digging in from the left side 
Takes a pitch away, and it's 1-0. Number seven spot in the order. The 1-0. Fly ball lifted shallow left field. Petrutz camps out under it, makes the grab. And that's a very big first out. Now you're in a spot where a grounder at somebody could indeed get the job done. And it's going to be the new left fielder, or the guy that came in as a left fielder. An inning ago in Mac Bingham. 5'11", 180, a senior from San Diego. Transferred from Arizona. And he lifts this one, foul ground right side. Will it stay in play? I don't think so, but I was wrong. And the catch is made by Will Hodo for out number two. If that ball was a little further down the line, it would have been into the third row of seats. But since it was near the edge of the dugout, there was enough real estate for Hodo to make the play. So one of those is right-handed hitter ball comes back into play as it starts dropping. Breaking ball strike to Jake Brown, the nine hole hitter and the last chance for LSU. He represents the go ahead run. One ball, one strike. Myers at 92 on that fastball. That's about the max velocity you'll see from him. Swing and a miss, and the Tigers are down to their final strike. Again, the Missouri loss to earlier today means that the winner of this game is assured of a spot in two weeks in Hoover at the SEC tournament. The loser will have work to do, either in Baton Rouge or down on the plains. One, two, swing and a best strike three. Myers earns the save, and Bama punches its ticket to the Hoover Met.
for Rob Vaughn. Well, he's going to let him pitch to him. And that one is hit a mile high, but shallow right. A late break from Hameter, and he can't get there. It'll drop in for a base hit. A tough break there for the Crimson Tide as it was hit right off the end of the bat. Hameter had problems picking it up. He may have even broken back initially, anticipating that one going towards the wall. Instead, he was late trying to get in. And rather than the day being done with an out for Hess, LSU's going to bring the tying run to the plate in Paxton Kling.